Hey guys, welcome back to Prepping in Progress. I'm Steve. And I'm Kim. Together again. I know, right? We've been kind of separated. It's no, been a while. Not separated. Hi, <laughs> I'm Steve. I, I'm, I'm co <laughs> co founder of Prepping in Progress, and you are? What a quinky dink, so am I. <laughs> uh, anyways, over the goofiness. Today we're going to talk about the reason why I'm wearing a gray shirt is because we're going to be talking about gray shirts? No, gray man. Gray man. Gray man. Mm. He went that way. Intro time. All right, guys, like I said, we're going to be talking about gray manning and kind of our philosophies on gray manning it. Um, prepper term, I don't know if we want, gray man. I don't know if I could add that to the bottom. We do prepper terms every now and then for our newbie preppers. Yes. So, could you do a quick description on what it is meant by gray man? Gray man is a philosophy of being invisible, um, not wearing clothes that are, that are going to make you stand out, logos, colors, just kind of Blend into the blending crowd. into the background yeah. of the crowd. Gray. Not black, not white, just gray. You know, um, if you're in the north where things are a little left-leaning, you don't walk out of your house in with a your, MAGA hat. <laughs> yeah, your, your Trump hat and your battle. If you want to gray man, if you want, to, if you don't care about gray man, you can do whatever you want to. You know that that would be the opposite of gray man. But if you if you're trying to deal with it in SHTF scenario, it's pretty much trying to find a way not to stand out, um, not to be perceived as a prepper necessarily, but as just one of the masses having to deal with the situation. It got me thinking about it today when we were we were out cleaning up the yard, we're getting some land, you know, it's fall thing, you know, we've got leaves raking and we're built, you know, getting tree trim and stuff like that. And I'm filthy. My this poor white shirt, it's, it's turning into gray man <laughs> from a white shirt. <laughs> but it got me thinking and I'm like, man, I gotta get cleaned up, I gotta do this and get ready for the video and I'm like you know what? In, in an SHTF scenario, I got to thinking, you don't want to do that. You don't want to be all clean shaven with your makeup on and have a nice clean clothes all the time, especially if you're going to be out seen by other people. Yeah. Um, I guess this is one philosophy on gray manning is if everybody's looking miserable, look miserable. <laughs> and that to me would be one way of gray manning it, uh, especially after a post event. Uh, if you are in a situation where you're going to have to be around people, if you're on your compound and it's just you and your group, you don't have to necessarily gray man. Do whatever works for you and your group. But say you have to go and interact with other people. Um, we read in that one book, uh, we had just did a review on uh, EMP, uh, Equipping Modern, Modern Patriots. Uh, when we they went down to the gate, oh, we have... Oh, it's UPS. Shh. It's okay. Bye, Mr. UPS man. Go away now. We're just blending in. <laughs> Speaking of blending in, a know, UPS someone driver? in that truck or that uniform, no Wouldn't one's going to look twice. <laughs> I didn't think about it. He could be a spy. <laughs> Anyways, the guy goes down to the front gate, and they're just full-out tactical gear to meet up with the big baddie, you know, of the of the book. And I mean, they're fully decked out, and all, all of their Kevlar, and they got their guns and everything. And I get it; they're trying to do a show of force at their gate. Uh, and the guy keeps trying to entice them to come into the town and to just be part of the group and be commute. And one of his members pops off. We're just fine here. We know how to take care of ourselves. We, we're, we're fine. We don't need any help. Somebody please shut him up. And the guy, in the, the narrator in the book, just kind of like, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a line from the book, but it should have been because he just kind of gives him a look like, dude. He just gave away so much. They've got all this military gear. They've got weapons and apparently they've got a lot of supplies enough to take care of an entire compound all from that simple word yeah that's not gray manning 
a gray man would be somebody who just has an old deer rifle and just maybe in some some real tree camo and I thank you kindly for your offer, sir, but we've been muddling along just fine. But, you know, if things get too much bad, you know, we might think about it, but right now we're gonna try to do it on our own. As we're hard as it's been. We're used to living poor. You know, it could be any of those, but make it sound like you're just as miserable as everybody else and just struggling along just like everybody else. You know, I told Steve the other day, I'm hanging on to some of my clothes from when I was bigger. And he thinks I'm kind of crazy for it until I explain to him. I'm like, you need us to hang on to some of yours because he's lost weight. I'm like, hang on to some of your fat clothes. It's like, some of your fat clothes. I'm like, yeah, especially people that don't know you. If all your clothes are all baggy and hanging off after a couple of months. <laughs> Even though we're eating just fine, it has the perception of I've lost a lot of weight. Yeah. At, you know, that none of my clothes fit anymore, and I mean, I've got my Jethro belt on, and you know, you know what a Jethro yeah, belt is. A piece <laughs> of rope, yeah. A piece of string, good twine going around it. I don't know if anybody's a fan of the Beverly Hillbilly sons. <laughs> Jethro. <laughs> hey, I always wanted to be a double knot spy. <laughs> double knot spy. Or a double knot spy, not, 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 not seven. <laughs> but, you know, hanging on to some of that. Uh, heck, I was even going to hang on to some of my makeup, but make it a little bit paler and maybe some dark circles. I don't know. I was going to go full movie set, you know, <laughs> a couple of bruises. <laughs> Bill Murray in Zombieland. Yeah, that's such a great example. I just thought that's awesome. I don't know if, if anybody's seen Zombieland, Bill Murray dresses up as one of the zombies to scare people off <laughs> to kind of fit in with the rest of the zombies bill murray is gray man in it like ace <laughs> <laughs> right up until he lets the heroes in who kill him yeah yeah that kind of went astray you know don't dress up like a zombie yeah. but <laughs> um you know and take this one step further on your bug out you know mm -hmm. a lot of people will tell you you know don't wear the military gear don't run around in your humvee don't do that why not because you look like someone in authority and either they're going to be ticked at the people in authority for not helping or everyone's going to come to you for helping or they're going to think you have something yes. that they might want to be able to take um because i'm thinking after a while they're going to be kind of ticked off at the authorities for not sending help. Yeah. And while I agree with that, I am going to throw out a couple of things. Mm -hmm. It's going to depend on your geographic location. Absolutely. Down here in the south, we've got a ton of good old boys who did their tours in the Marines and their army and got out. And they've still got a lot of their camos. They've still got a lot of their backpacks. So maybe mix it up a little bit so it doesn't look like you are possibly current military. Yeah, not full, not full uni, but you know, real tree camo and your Marpat backpack and a, you know, a baseball cap. Or yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And that's another thing when you're talking about on a bug out bag. Uh, I got a lot of comments on my bug out bag video because my bug out bag, I got it. It is military style. I got it because. All the compartments, the, the way it holds together, it's got a place for my camel pack. It is a good backpack and that's why I use it. But a lot of people pointed out being a military style backpack, it looks very militant. Military. Military. And it's not great for game, uh, gray manning. And I was like, you know what? They're probably right. It's yeah. going to make me stick out like a sore thumb. Um, make it look like I'm one of those preppers. You know, I've got this big old huge pack on my back so for me I went out and got a new bug out bag I haven't put anything in it yet because I'm still trying to figure out how I want to pack it right because this one's new it's not like my old one I got a full hiking backpack with the, the frame and everything it's still got a place where I can put my camel pack and guys that's not true she's teasing our next book review the borrowed world <laughs> <laughs> in which the guy does utilize the Appalachian Trail to get home. Maybe, but 
I did find a lot of good about having a <coughs> backpack that is used for people who do are used to going long distances okay. uh, and camping overnight uh, on trails and in the woods. And so I'm going to hopefully get to actually use this, maybe not during the winter time, but hopefully get to use it and going on long hikes. <coughs> so I'm switching over to a more <coughs> civilian style bug out bag to hopefully blend in a little bit more. But hopefully that coming soon of me trying to figure out how to pack that a little bit better. And fingers crossed, I actually get to take it out for a test drive. Nice. <laughs> Don't know when that will be, but... Well, the weather keeps playing oddball. I know, it's we like... We might a... be able to take it out next week. No. 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 <laughs> it's turning cold, and I'm a bit of a wimp in the cold. Okay. Speaking of bags... Missy yours. All right. It's militant. Okay. So... Y'all know we've kind of chatted that I'm going to SHOT Show in January. I'm kind of jelly. So, I give you, you've seen this on, on some of NWA Prepper stuff. This is a one of four exclusive Sojourn Gear backpack. He got his bear patch on it. I got a bear patch. <laughs> his bear patch. We, we were hanging out with with Bear the other day. and Bear of Bear Independent. Oh, so independiente. <laughs> oh, so independiente. <laughs> um, but, you know, this outer pouch has, you know, pockets for your pens, pencils, or other gear if you wanted to do it that way. <clears throat> Side pouches. I love these things. I went digging and found some of my old Nalgene bottles from like the World Wildlife Federation. <laughs> I almost said World Wrestling for some re reason. And this is the cool thing. I, you know, Cody makes great stuff, but I did not think that this pouch would fit a computer. And I'm sorry, Cody. Did I was it. wrong. I, I doubted the Cody. This thing has enough space to fit a Toshiba mm -hmm. laptop, the MacBook Air, and the iPad that we're filming on. All three of them at the same time? Yes. Wow. So Cody, he did it. He did it right. And you know, I'm but would you consider this Rayman? I would consider it. Because to me, it looks milk chocolate. Yeah. It's it's a it's militant enough that someone might do a double take. You know, is that a Vietnam era pack because of the color? Mm -hmm. um, which I did request because I like OD. However, it, it still looks kind of civilian. I it see. looks very civilian. You know, Cody put an orange clip on it so that you know it it doesn't quite um, go full military. I would wear it. Yeah, I would I, I would take the take the hint at the chance at it, you know. And I mean, it's got you know little American flag made in the USA, Sojourn gear. It's obviously not issue. Yeah, when someone gets close, so I'd run it any day of the week. I'm very proud and happy of this bag at, with this bag, and Cody has said that he would be willing to open it up to the public, but it's going to be a as you order, and it's going to be about two hundred bucks. So. I liked it a lot, Cody. Thank you very much. But yeah, this is, I would consider this milk chocolate. You know, it's not quite gray gray. It's a dark gray. Yeah, it's a very dark gray. Yeah. For a gray man. But I said the biggest thing with gray manning it is, and there's different philosophies. Some people say, you know, put forth this kind of air of strength. So nobody messes with you type thing. That's not going to work for everybody, you know, if you don't have it to back it up, say. Yeah. Um, or if you're just kind of wanting to just get out, get away from the city centers and things like that, and you just want to kind of blend in and not stand out into the crowd. You don't want to make yourself a target, but you want to make yourself not look like a target, not like you have something to be taken from you. Um, but you can make it where you don't look like you would 
just lay lay down and die either. I said you can. I guess you can put kind of a nice balance on it. And you really need to look at your size, your haircut. You know, I mean, for you, you know, some would tell you to hide that because you know, and hide the fact that you're a girl. Yeah, that's another way of green manning is trying to make it not, especially as a silhouette in a distance, make yeah. it not stand out. Especially if you're female traveling uh, alone, um, to possibly make it where they're not quite sure at a distance. All they see is the AR pointed at them. Yeah. <laughs> and so, <laughs> you know, and I was talking with one of our friends just the other day, and you know, she said that I always look fierce. That I'm, I exude a. Don't mess with me. Ugh, and I think I'm pretty gentle and a kitten, and I'm really a pushover. And, and until it's it's time to you know do mean things to bad people, and that could be a failing. If, if everyone who sees me reads aggressive, and I'm not trying to appear aggressive, but because of the shaved head. And that's the biggest goatee. thing is you can't really determine if, at least I don't think you can fully determine on how you are perceived by other people. Uh, and so getting some feedback of going, okay, I'm going to be dressed as such, you know, I'm going to try to come off as a hiker. You know, I'm going to kind of try to look like somebody who just got off the trail or something of don't really have much, but I mean, at least got a gun that I can, you know, deal with. But trying not to come off as somebody who is overly militant that has a ton of stuff to, I guess, protect. Yeah. Um, I, I guess it's more concerning because in a bug out, you want to exude this kind of don't mess with me attitude in any way. Don't approach. I guess that's more of a sense of not so much gray, but almost black, where you just... That don't mean that in a racist term, but kind of this kind of don't get near militant, ninja. fierce. Yeah, like Ugh. like your shirt, just kind of this kind of don't approach. I'm not warm and comforting, and come near me, and we can snuggle up by the campfire together. On a bug out, you you want to kind of exude this don't approach. Yeah, you know. Which I can see that being not so much of a problem in a bug out scenario. Um, people are more likely to approach a woman, and so I don't want to look like one because I don't want people approaching me. Whether that's for help or because they feel like they're a little bit safer approaching a woman or whatever it may be. Or they can take advantage of the Or they can take woman. advantage. Any number of reasons women feel more easily approached. And so you want to possibly just exude enough or like, hey, don't come any closer or I will shoot. Especially when you're asleep in your car that you've just knocked the window out of. Oh, shush. <laughs> That's from a different book. <laughs> but when you are, say, held down on a homestead, people are going to be more likely to start trying to build communities, trying to reach out. And if you don't want to be a part of that, say you've already got your group, you've got your mag, you've got everything set up, and you've got everything you need, you don't need people post event yeah at that point you want to look just as miserable as anybody else you don't have anything to offer them I don't have I don't have anything man I don't have any notable skills I don't have anything I want to completely you know what did you do I was an office worker I was this you know I want to be the least approachable person in the sense of I'm not worth your time I was an IRS agent. <laughs> They'll leave you alone and send you on your I way. I worked for the DMV for 20 years. <laughs> Just wait. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it, it's more in the sense of when people approach you, you want to exude a sense of, I, I'm struggling just as much as you are. We don't have food. We don't have any of this. You know, I, I'm starving. I got my baggy clothes on. I got my black makeup underneath my eyes. You know, my you know, hair's unkempt, you know, you're growing out a beard because you don't have a razor, you know, whatever yeah. it may be, to, you know, dirty clothes, to whatever. So when you do have to interact with people, they don't automatically see a clean-shaven, clean, well-fed, 
uh, well-armed community, and they go, oh. Hi. They've got stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, if you're wanting to welcome people into your community, then yeah, let them know that, say, yeah, we can feed you, come on in. But I would be very careful in that because, like we've said a million times, your mag should be fo formed up long before SHTF comes along. But that's all I've got to say. I don't know if you've got anything to add to it. I think we've pretty well covered it. Oh, I'm awesome then, right? Like the best gray man, gray man he ever did. <laughs> I'm a little gray on that comment. <laughs> But anyways, guys, I hope this helps and kind of understanding the different philosophies and different approaches to gray manning. Um, oh, I wanted to add one more thing before we go. Gray manning while you're prepping. OPSEC. Uh, don't go out and let everybody that you possibly meet know what all you have and that you're going to be ready for the zombie apocalypse. Y'all know that we are of course, that we're preppers, but y'all don't know everything we've got and you don't know where we've got it at. And, and so even in your prepping circles, um, I would definitely restrain from just letting everything out. But definitely on new people and approaching, I, I'm of the sense of graying it up. <laughs> Unless you're trying to get them to become preppers, and then it's just kind of talking to them, seeing where they're at, seeing what they think. You'd be surprised how many people are preppers without knowing that they're preppers. <laughs> that because may, they're graying it up. <laughs> that may be a subject to talk with. Uh, <laughs> how to spot a prepper who doesn't know they're a prepper. <laughs> well, that or, or just introducing someone to prepping. You know, We should probably sit down with NWA and talk to, that, talk to them about that at some point. Well, okay, okay, guys. I hope this helps in kind of discussing. And I want y'all to tell in the comment section. I kind of love <laughs> That's the comment, comment section. section. <laughs> Down below. <laughs> uh, what do you or some gray man techniques that you may be implementing that would help others to kind of stay off everybody's radar? There you go. All right, guys, don't forget to do that like, share, subscribe things on Zoom. Thank y'all for so much for watching. Have a good one. Scene. <laughs> we're filming. I know. You okay. said you wished you were. <laughs> okay. Outtakes. Who wants outtakes? Nobody. He went that way. Intro time. <laughs> intro time? Cool the Q intro. Cool the Q intro. Yeah. I did that earlier filming. Cool the Q the cool intro. Ah! <laughs>